Well, in the last few videos, we have looked at uh, a number of online options for uh, using AI. Uh, most of them involve paying, uh, although there are a couple of free options. But uh, what if you wanted to run AI art on your own system at home? Uh, it is possible. Uh, the downside is you've got to have a, a fairly powerful computer uh, to pull it off. You've got to have a, a, uh, a lot of video RAM. Uh, and if you have that, if you've got a, a gaming or a graphic arts uh, computer, then uh, you might want to look into running uh, Stable Diffusion locally. Uh, now, how do you do that? Well, I'm not going to go into all of the details because, uh, again, that's not the purpose of this series. But uh, there are a number of videos uh, you can uh, find. You just go to uh, go to YouTube and uh, search on Run Stable Diffusion locally. And you can find a number of tutorials that will show you how to download uh, the, uh, the, the programs that you need to make it work on your system. Uh, it's, it's kind of complex, uh, but uh, once you get through it and get it set up, uh, it works really well. I've got uh, actually two different interfaces on my uh, computer uh, that both run Stable Diffusion, and they're each a little bit different, uh, but uh, the one that I have here is just uh, Stable Diffusion, but the actual um, version is called Automatic 1111. And then I have uh, Invoke AI, which is again uh, another uh, version of Stable Diffusion. Uh, it's using, using one uh, version 1.5, and uh, this one is using, uh, which is basically, this is Stable Diffusion 1.4. So um, what um, I'm going to do is I'm going to put in uh, the same prompt, again, that we've been using, a, an illustration of a tranquil winter scene with a brook and cabin. And again, just to get a benchmark and show how all of these different apps work, uh, we're going to just do this quickly. Uh, one thing I do want to emphasize again is uh, these local installations don't cost anything. So, I mean, you can create a million images a day if you want to, and it's not going to cost you any more than it would uh, if you did 100 uh, images a day. So, uh, that's the advantage of, of running uh, Stable Diffusion locally. So, I've got my prompt here. Again, we're going with a very basic prompt, not a lot of bells and whistles. Uh, I do want to adjust my uh, uh, width and height, my uh, resolution and all that. So, I'm going to go up to uh, 768 by 512. And then I'm going to come over here and click Generate. And uh, again, depending on uh, a lot of different factors, including, you know, your own system. And uh, it just, uh, sometimes this goes very quickly. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, while it's generating, you can see we're 15% into uh, creating the image. I'm only having it create one as opposed to four or five. I could come down here to batch size and I can actually set it up to eight images. <clears throat> and I could do batch count, which would be like, you know, three three batches of eight would give me 24 images. Um, but again, for time's sake, and because I'm doing this real time, I'm just going to generate a single image. So we're almost at halfway uh, at this point. There are a number of different things that you can do here. Image to image, which is uh, uh, actually taking one image and uh, using that as your base and having the AI modify it. Uh, there are a lot of different options here. Again, if we do a series that's a little bit more complex, you'll learn a little bit about seed. A seed is the basic starting point, but here we've got a picture coming up already. So let's see what, uh, uh, what Stable Diffusion is going to give us. Again, same prompt uh, and very similar results to a lot of the other ones. Just some, you know, really basic uh, little trees. Kind of a painterly look. I've got a sort of a cabin here, but I can't, you know, I'm not real sure if that cabin is sort of hovering in the air there. Um, it's got some nice trees on the side, got our little brook. Uh, so it's got, again, a kind of a sketchy feel. So let's uh, go over to Invoke AI and do the same thing. Okay, this is laid out uh, just a little bit 
uh, differently. Okay, it's telling me I can get the newest stable diffusion uh, weight file. I guess I've got that. I didn't know I, I had it. Uh, so, uh, but uh, here is where you put in your prompt. Uh, I'm going to change my, well, let me, let me paste in the prompt. Okay. And let me fix my resolution to 768 by 512. And here I've got a random seed, which is what I want. And, okay, let's start it, see what we get. Okay, and with this particular version, you can actually watch it as it resolves the image. And, uh, and I kind of like this for illustration purposes, because uh, this is how stable diffusion works. It starts with a random pattern of noise and then just generally uh, resolves it into the image that you're asking for. Again, don't ask me to explain that. I don't understand it, but that's how it works. So it's slowly generating our picture here, again, with the exact same prompt that we've had before. And let's see what we get this time. Okay, it's coming in, almost there, almost finished, and let's see what we get. Okay, so we get another, let's put this in the viewer, and we get another little winter scene in Brook, and kind of a cabin, actually looks more like a house with the arched windows there, uh, but uh, that's what we've got. got a kind of a waterfall there. I'm not sure what that is, but uh, that gives you an idea of how stable diffusion and invoke AI work. Uh, again, we have not really done anything in detail. We're going to in a couple of uh, these next videos, but I just want to give you the feel of uh, how they work. So let's look finally at mid journey. Mid journey is a different animal altogether uh, because uh, it does not operate in a browser or on your computer. Uh, it actually operates on what is called a Discord server. So you actually, to, uh, to run Stable Diffusion, or not Stable Diffusion, but uh, Mid Journey, you've got to go first to uh, discord.com. And I'm going to pull this up here just a second. Okay, I'm going to just bring that in, and you go to mid uh, to uh, Discord, and you have to download it, uh, or you can open it in your browser either way. But uh, you set up an account, and you can set up your own server on your uh, home system, or it also works on apps. I have it on my iPad, and it works very well. And once you've got that set up, then you go to uh, you go to midjourney.com. And then you click on join the beta, or if you want information, click on getting started. And uh, once you have set up your account, you get a certain number of uh, images free with uh, just testing mid journey out, but it's not very many. I think it's like about 25 uh, images or so. And then you have to pay, and there's a, a $10 a month level. Uh, there's a $30 a month level, there's a $50 a month level, and those numbers have changed a little bit uh, recently, but I, I, I don't remember uh, exactly. I think what they've done is they've added, if you want to pay for a whole year, it'll knock the $30 a month level down to, you know, $24, $25, something like that. Uh, so, uh, so there are some pricing options uh, depending on, you know, how much you want to pay. Um, I started out with a $10 a month option just until I decided whether or not I wanted to keep using it. And then I finally upgraded to the $30 a month because um, I actually use Midjourney quite a lot. But uh, anyway, that's, that's a, a real uh, concise 
uh, tutorial on how to get started with uh, with Midjourney, but uh, I want to show how it works. Now, this is the the demo that uh, we have uh, been using from the beginning, but I'm going to type that in again, and uh, let's see if it gives us something different. So I'm going to just now with Midjourney, you have to first of all enter slash, and then imagine, and then you put your prompt in. I'm going to put that in. And to set my resolution, I have to do dash dash AR3 colon 2. And that gives me the, the image dimensions. So let's put that in <clears throat> and see what we get. And Midjourney is one that... Uh, because there are so many users, sometimes it goes starts right away. Sometimes you wait a few minutes. So it just uh, there are millions and millions of Midjourney users, and and you never know how quickly uh, it's going to work. Okay, so it's coming up. <clears throat> We've got four images coming up. That's typically what uh, Midjourney will give you is uh, is four sample images, and then you can either upgrade them, you can do a reroll, have it. It give you you know four more. Uh, just uh, depends on what you want. Okay, so those are finished. And what we're going to do, I'm just going to click in the image. That's going to enlarge it a little bit. And so the results are very different from what we got before. Uh, these actually look a lot more like illustrations, uh, but you can see the quality is a lot better. Uh, and uh, overall, now there's occasionally some glitches and things like that that you'll see but uh, uh, but overall the quality of mid-journey images is is much much uh, better and uh, you can see this one and there's a uh, that was the original that uh, I prompted with and I think that was actually a, a reroll I think I uh, did that one and then I did some other ones you can see back here before I decided on a winter image I decided a a, just a stunning landscape with a tall waterfall. And uh, you can actually get some pretty interesting results uh, with that. So uh, so that's Midjourney. So those are, uh, are the various options that you have for getting into AI art and using it in your homeschool setting. Now, the next question is, okay, so what? <laughs> what, what do I do with it? You can, you can generate pictures. Uh, cool, but uh, how is that going to be something I can use uh, either artistically or in an education setting? That's what the rest of the videos will be about, and uh, we'll get to that in the next one.